So, so moving on, so I just want to talk about a couple of other types of lasers. Um, so dye lasers, so these are typically very old school. They're, they're still somewhat used, but not nearly as much as the solid state lasers, which I'll show momentarily. Oh, and by the way, of course, as you might have guessed, right, these are gas phase lasers, right? Being that we're using argon and helium and neon. So the little cavity is just filled with these um, gases, okay? So dye lasers take advantage of fluorescence. So here you would have a dye that is a good uh, fluorophore, okay? So something with really strong and intense fluorescence. And here you would use some pumping radiation to excite that dye molecule. And then of course that dye molecule will emit light. Um, and then now what you have to create is a cavity to amplify that fluoresced light, okay? So here in this cavity, um, you can see the way that this is focused, you know, you'll get waves that fit in this cavity, right? That are some integer value, right? Of the fluorophoring molecule. And the complication behind this is because fluorescence spectra are typically broad, as I showed in some of the previous slides, right? If we look at, um, you know, intensity versus wavelength for a fluorescence spectrum, you know, it might look something crazy like this, right? So which one of these wavelengths do you pick? Well, once again, that's gonna be entirely based on the distance of your cavity. So typically in these dye lasers, you also have the ability to tune the cavity size based on what um, wavelength you want to pick. And so that's what makes these types of lasers really useful is that if you've got a broad range of wavelengths being emitted, you can select, you know, any one of those wavelengths you want based on your ability um, to tune that cavity mirror to a certain frequency, okay? Um, so that's why these are incredibly useful in that you can create a laser with a wide variety of colors. However, typically these um, fluorophores, right, have to be replaced, so they can often get quenched, um, or what we often will call it um, photo bleaching. So the pumping radiation can eventually oxidize the hell out of the dye molecule, so you have to get fresh dye. So that's why you can see this is um, shows you with a dye stream coming in and out. So typically like fresh, you know, laser dye would be coming through. Um, that can be messy, right? Because you're dealing with liquids that you have to pump through some cavity. Um, and so also the complications of tuning these cavities can be very difficult. Okay. Um, so now there are a lot more solid state laser options that allow specificity and wavelength.